Okay, hello, good evening, everyone. How are you today? today? How are you so tonight? Cold. So, so in my case. Okay. Mm -hmm. Teacher. Tell me. Uh, I will disconnect at 9.30 p.m. because I have okay. maintenance at 10 p.m. and I need to prepare all of changes. Sorry, uh, today is uh, today is our one to one. <laughs> oh, our session on uh, no, the one on one for you is on Monday because you are ah. number sixteen and today is the fifteen. I was just following the list and the because the other person wasn't here, so that's why I asked you for. Ah. Hey. Oh, yeah, okay, but okay. your date is on Monday. Don't worry. You may oh, okay. you may disconnect, but remember that you have to catch up. And yes. it's not going to count those 30 minutes in your attendance. Uh, I connect at the cell phone. All right. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a listener. Yes. All right. Good. Thank you very much for letting me know. Okay, people, we are going to start the class because we have the review and practice of all unit two and also a little of unit one because our midterm test includes unit one and two, remember that. And we want to complete the midterm test tonight because we need to be updated, okay? We need to update the platform. So uh, we are going to do it here. I need all your patience, your collaboration. Everybody is going to work over here in your midterm test. Okay, to start, to start, we are going to see some exercises, some short exercises, we, uh, just to practice some grammar structures. Okay, allow me to introduce the class and then we are going to start. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the class agenda for tonight is we have our feedback. Our feedback is really important because we want to um, put in words and short words what we are studying or what's our topic. Then we have some focus group conversation again and vocabulary practice. Everything is in the context of focus group and product testing. So it's not only focus group conversation, but we want to see this because in your homework and in your midterm test, you have this, okay? So we want to practice the vocabulary and the most important part is that you are going to have your short presentations that we have been preparing, okay? And today it's class number 15. We have the midterm exam review and practice, unit one and two, but mostly unit two. In the midterm, we have unit one and two. The class objective is that you will be able to practice vocabulary and grammar structures, structures from unit two, okay? We are uh, going to take some time for you to understand the points that you haven't. So please feel free to ask, feel free to solve your doubts. It's important for us to achieve all the vocabulary correctly, as much as we can, the grammar structures. And uh, that's because uh, on Monday we will start unit three. So we go forward, all right? We move forward. Okay, then let's start. One second, guys. Right, 
Okay, I apologize, guys. Okay, then allow me to see this first. Oh, okay. Hello. Everything goes right. Okay. Well, allow me to call the roll. Please, everybody, turn your camera on. And when you hear your name, you say present. Ana Lorena Lobato Orellana. Present. Okay, thank you. Blanca Jennifer Torres de Martinez. Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez. I see he's just a listener right now, right? Is he in? Yes, he is. Um, Carlos Eduardo Torres Durán. Carlos Ernesto Hernández Cepeda. Present teacher. Okay. Carlos Francisco Arias Sánchez. Cristina Edith Ramos Ríos. Present. Edwin Antonio Quintero Sumaña. Present. Okay. Eulice Torres Torres. Present. Fátima Noemi Umaña Castro. Me cuesta. No, Emi, no, Emi, Omaya. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, Glenda Josefina Toledo Leiva. Present. Okay. <laughs> Jose Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. Mr. Jose Salvador, not yet. Osman Atilio Serrano. Karen Lizette Sánchez Castro. Nancy Margarita Morán Morán. Present. Okay, Nancy, thank you. Nelson Alberto Peraza Mejía. Present. Okay. Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. Uh, he was just a listener too. Raúl Ernesto González. No, Mr. Raúl. Oh, I'm sorry. Rosa del Carmen Enriquez Flores. Present. Okay. Wilber Alberto Perez Mendez. Not yet. Jose Miguel Torres Hernandez. Present teacher. Okay. So here we are, guys. Today is the end of the section two. Yes, you need two. We are finishing this. It was kind of extends, but I think we have achieved as much as we could about vocabulary and grammar structures. The grammar structures we have been studying were just the subject verb agreement. Remember, subject verb agreement, that's uh, the first thing. And then the transitional words. These transition words are for addition. Remember, we have a lot of transition words, different contexts or different meanings, different usages. You will find at the time of, of reading, you will find a lot of words that connect one idea with the other, but giving a slight, uh, I mean, uh, a different meaning. That's why they are used for, okay? You add ideas, you contrast ideas, you um, compare ideas, um, you discard ideas. Also, you can um, reinforce ideas. Um, uh, you, you, maybe 
you are just adding objects, not only ideas. So you use these conjunctives, uh, a conjunctive words, conjunctive words, because sometimes we say it's a phrase, a complete phrase with different words. It's not only one word. But now we know just a little bit about the transition words of addition, okay? Hagamos esa diferencia, ¿verdad? Eh, ayer me manifestaba una preocupación grande que tiene su compañero Carlos Ernesto y la voy a retomar porque creo que todos me han manifestado esa preocupación que ustedes tienen. Me, me dicen, por ejemplo, es que fíjese que el vocabulario que estamos viendo Ahorita yo no lo conocía, o por lo menos no es mi área, ¿verdad? Entonces, me ha costado mucho o no lo, no lo puedo asimilar. Podría ser su preocupación. Miren, este es nada más un contexto, ¿verdad? En donde estamos viendo las estructuras gramaticales y algunas palabras importantes que resuenan dentro de nuestro ambiente laboral. No necesariamente es mi área, pero en generalidades las podemos conocer. Ahora, el contexto de mercadeo, pero focus group, eh, eh, research, eh, podemos decir un development process, no solamente es de un producto y no solamente se usa en el área de mercadeo. ¿verdad? En cualquier área de la empresa vamos a encontrar development processes y vamos a encontrar también focus group y vamos a encontrar lo que todos tenemos que llevar en la universidad, ¿verdad? La, la materia de investigación y métodos, ¿sí? Esto es lo que hemos estado viendo prácticamente. Así que quiero que en su, su estrés se baje un poco y ubiquemos la situación hacia dónde estamos. Y recordemos, recordemos que no es una clase de mercadeo en inglés. Esta es una clase de inglés aprendiendo el vocabulario de mercadeo, que es muy diferente, ¿sí? Estamos communication, así que por favor todos animémonos y veamos que vamos logrando los objetivos, ¿ok? Espero yo que todos estemos en la misma página, ¿verdad? Porque yo los he visto con muy buen desarrollo, muy buen desarrollo. Hay algunas cosas que tal vez por estar pensando en muy grande, no nos hemos fijado que solo se trata de una estructura gramatical o se trata de palabras específicas, ¿verdad? Que es vocabulario. Entonces, ubiquémonos de esa manera para que podamos ir extendiendo nuestro vocabulario. Acordemos que ya vamos entrando al intermediate y ahorita ya vamos a otro tema más, ¿verdad?, que es en el contexto de mercadeo, pero se puede aplicar a todas las áreas. Y así, en el 3, van a usar este mismo vocabulario y extendiendo más. En el 4, este vocabulario, el del 3 y más. Y así sucesivamente hasta llegar al avanzado en donde ni los teachers sabemos todo. Ok, no lo sabemos todo. Vamos cada día agregando vocabulario, ¿verdad? Vamos agregando. La idea es to communicate, to communicate, to understand, to get familiar with the vocabulary, to get familiar with the words, okay? Concepts, right? Are we okay so far? Ahora sí, ya estamos un poquito más tranquilos. Todos, breathe in and breathe out. All right? Va. De eso se trata esta clase. Así que, por favor, yo creo que el estrés hay que bajarlo. Bien, empecemos entonces. Let's start by remembering or, or recalling the other clauses. Do you remember the other clauses? Do you remember the other clauses? We need two clauses. Uh, when we want to express two ideas, two ideas, one in time and the other is the one that, the, uh, that makes the meaning of the time or the action that happens in the time, then we have adverb clauses of time. ¿Cuáles son los adverbios de tiempo que conocimos? Acordémonos. Mm -hmm. Before. After. 
Often. Often, okay, those are frequency adverbs. Mm -hmm. Then. Always. Then, always, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's Sometimes. much of Okay, good. Sometimes, mm -hmm. those are frequency adverbs. In general, time adverbs will be before, after, then, while, when, and they are usually placing the action in time. Placing the, uh, the action in time. So we need subject and verb plus the adverb of time, okay? To make this a uh, an adverb clause. Entonces, veíamos que eso se puede reducir y se puede hacer más corto. Esto es rela relacionado, para que no se vayan muy lejos, uh, cuando utilizamos los gerunds. Gerunds. Los gerunds los vamos a usar después de un adverb like this one, okay? Like a preposition también, okay? ¿Se acuerdan que hay prepositions of time? Preposition lo único que hace es una palabra que ante, se antepone, o sea, que va antes de el nombre para ubicarlo, para ubicarlo en tiempo también, okay? Entonces, adverbio y preposición, por último, a nosotros, en gramática, si estuviéramos estudiando para lingüistas, yo les dijera, hay que ver la diferencia exacta. No. Lo que hay que hacer es usarlas. Eso es lo que nosotros necesitamos, ¿ok? Después de before, después de after, después de when, o más que todo, while and when, ustedes van a poner una ing. That's it. Ahora, para reducir una adverb of clause, vamos a ir a esta parte. Les voy a compartir la pantalla para que hagamos ese pequeño ejercicio. Para reducirla, hay algunas cuestiones que hay que considerar gramaticalmente. ¿Ok? Gramaticalmente. So, grammatically speaking, we are going to see this. We want to reduce this um, adverb, I mean, adverb clauses of time into adverb phrases, okay? There you go. Oh my goodness, go, go, go. Here it is. Entonces, vamos a reducirlas cuando encontremos, por ejemplo, before o que nosotros queramos usar estos, before, after, when, while, since, y otros adverbios de tiempo. Still, ok, um, no se me ocurre otro ahorita. Pero veamos. La primera. A ver, vamos a reducir este siete que tenemos acá. Así que necesito toda su ayuda. Esto ya lo hemos hecho antes. Hay ciertas normas que tenemos que considerar. Veamos que son dos cláusulas. La cláusula de tiempo y la independiente. Ahora, el solito no tiene significado. Before I agree to your idea, what? What is going to happen? What will happen? Necesitamos la otra parte, ¿verdad? Para entender esta. Entonces, esta cláusula depende de la otra, ¿sí? La, la cláusula de tiempo depende de la cláusula del significado de la acción, ¿ok? Entonces, el significado de esta cláusula es muy importante, pero estará completado si tenemos la otra cláusula, ¿verdad? Bien. Subject, verb, could be a complement, no es necesario el complement, pero aquí hay un complement. A ver, en, el, en la siguiente, subject, verb y el complement. Van separados por una coma. Ok. Vemos primero si tienen en los dos el mismo sujeto. ¿Sí? Porque si tuvieran diferentes sujetos, yo no puedo reducir eso. Porque voy a generar alguna confusión. ¿Verdad? Entonces, ¿cómo quedaría la primera? Si voy a quitar el sujeto y voy a convertir el verbo en ing, pero solo es de la cláusula adverbial. Vamos a ver cómo quedaría. Before. 
before agreeing to your before idea. Before agreeing your idea. Before agreeing, agreeing. Mm -hmm. with idea. With your idea. There you go. La segunda cláusula no sufre ningún cambio, ¿verdad? I need to see the detailed market analysis. Okay. Vamos a ver, number two. It's different subject. Different subject? Mm, identifiquemos cuál es la cláusula adverbial primero. Identify the, the other before, clause. Before we can commit. Okay, before we can commit. Ajá. Commit. Y... Eso va a suceder, ¿ok? ¿Qué es lo que va a suceder antes? Que nos comprometamos. ¿Va a suceder? It sounds like a great idea. No, ¿verdad? ¿Qué no. es lo que va a suceder? <coughs> Ajá. We'll need to do a complete market analysis before we can commit. Esto, por último, ¿verdad? Esto, por último, no es la cláusula completa. Ahí tenemos que tener ese cuidado, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál es la cláusula adverbial? ¿Cuál es la cláusula independiente? ¿Verdad? Ya lo demás es adorno, ¿sí? Entonces, ¿cómo quedaría? Vemos entonces que sí, Lorena, sí tenemos el mismo sujeto. Mire, we and we. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Before we come in, uh -huh. it sounds like a great idea, but uh -huh. we will need to do a complete market analysis. Okay, sin darle vuelta a pasarlo al principio, porque no es necesario pasarlo al principio, solamente necesitamos reducir la cláusula adverbial. Entonces. It sounds like a great idea. Before we can come in. O sea, seguimos igual y al final hacemos esa reducción. But we'll to do a complete. A complete analysis, market analysis. Before committing. Okay. Before committing. There you go. Teacher, in this case, eliminate the auxiliary can. Yes, because it's not needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Me perdió el comiring aquí. Oye, qué bien. Ahí está. Vamos a ver. Number three. Business case support of God claim money. So, so we are spending it for the model. Is not. Mm -hmm. Busquemos en donde está la adverb clause. Uh, things, see, things we are expanding. 
Mm -hmm. I think we are expanding market. into the mobile games market. Okay, ajá. Ahora, ¿es el mismo o no es no. el mismo? No. ¿Se puede o no se puede reducir? No. I think that just because it's the our product. Mm, okay, but our product is not we. Mm. Yeah, our product is an object. It's it. Yeah, yeah it's the same as. as... The business case is it. So it uh, is not possible to reduce it, right? Si yo hiciera since expanding into the mobile games market, mm -hmm. since expanding, we as a company, or what? Mm -hmm. What is expanding, right? Okay. Entonces, el primero es it, y el segundo es we. Desde ahí ya no, ¿verdad? Number four. In the toy industry, we consider a really important person in packaging. While we are implementing to the go market strategy mm. in the toy industry. What is the other clause? While. While, While we are implementing any go to market strategy. Go to market, right? Mm -hmm. Strategy. Does it have the same um subject with the independent clause? Yes, it's the yeah. same. We. It's the same. We and we. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, tenemos por ahí el verbo be, verdad? Mm -hmm. El verbo be se elimina, ¿ya? Yeah? El verbo be se elimina. Se elimina el sujeto. ¿Y cómo nos quedaría? A ver. In the toy industry, we consider really, really important pricing, pricing and packaging, packaging while implementing, implementing and go to so market strategy. strategy. Great. While implementing. Mm -hmm. While implementing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Vamos a poner los tres puntitos para que sepan que todo queda igual arriba, ¿verdad? Entonces, while implementing y todo sigue igual para allá. ¿Ok? Vamos a ver, number five. They. They, uh -huh. What's the adverb clause? When they are placed. Uh -huh. Reduction process. When, when analyzing the production process. Okay. ¿Tiene el mismo sujeto que la independent clause? <coughs> mm. No. The, the team. The team is they is the, the team. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, right? Yeah. It's the same. It could be taken as the plural thing or as the uh, singular, depending on the style or on the need of the speaker, right? The speaker's need. Entonces, vemos acá que tenemos, when they analyze the production process, is the advert clause. Tiene el sujeto de y la independent clause tiene el sujeto the team. Ajá. Ellos. Sí, el equipo, ellos, ajá, está correcto, vamos a, eh, vamos a reducir. A ver, reduzcamos entonces esto, ¿cómo quedaría? Eliminate the subject. When analyzing the production process. Discovering a few problems. 
Your team discovered a few problems in oh, yeah. the distribution process. You discovered a problem in the distribution process. Yeah. 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 Oh, we changed in the beginning. Hmm? At the beginning, so. Yes, because it's only in the adverb clause. I'm not yeah, changing clause. anything. I'm just reducing the adverb clause. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, then, number six. Is the same. The same. Okay, and what is the adverb clause? When you have a personal relationship. Okay. ¿Cómo quedaría? How it will be? When having a personal having relationship. Having a personal relationship. All right, good. Mm -hmm. On one very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, vamos entonces a la number seven. Let's go to number seven. The same. Um, what is the adverb clause? When I feel this person is when I feel this person is coming. In his comment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, how it will yeah. be? I am I friend someone, someone when I have friends feeling, someone. feeling when what? feeling this person. Feeling this person. So respectful in his comments. Okay. And friend. And friend is a verb, right? Ahora vamos a hacer una lectura acerca de to friend or unfriend. Okay. To friend or unfriend. Ahora en los tiempos de la revolución del internet, ¿verdad? En social media. Tenemos to friend, como amistarse o amigarse, and unfriend, desamigarse, que ahora lo conocemos como bloquearlo, ¿verdad? Ya, <ríe> yeah, bloquearlo, unfriend. Ajá. A ver, entonces se han convertido en un verbo y una palabra muy utilizada que ha tomado significado por la tecnología, ¿verdad? Ok, ¿Is there any questions so far about the... Uh, adverb clauses of time. Hay alguna pregunta todavía de esto? No. No. Ahora sí ya lo comprendimos un poco mejor. Sí. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Bien. Veamos un ejemplo de cómo se usan las transitions of word, I mean, of addition words. Vamos a hacer esta pequeña lectura y vamos a identificar. Ya están eh, marcadas ahí las palabras que son de addition, addition. Existen. Como les repito, un montón de otras palabras que ustedes van a encontrar que conectan idea con idea, pero no son de addition, ¿ok? Tienen un significado distinto, pero sí son transitions, ¿ok? Bien, vamos a leer entonces. <clears throat> Music lessons can benefit children in several ways. First, they introduce children to a potentially lifelong source of pleasure. They also teach rhythm, sensitivity to nuance, teamwork, and other values. Furthermore, 
or moreover, there is evidence they can train the ear and help with the language with language learning. As a result, parents should see the, le the lessons as an investment, not just an expense. And on the other hand, forcing a re reluctant child to spend hours on lessons may cause him to develop a lifelong dislike of music. Perhaps he or she might get more value from a different kind of music or a completely different activity. You could try a few lessons if she still resists. Try a different instrument instead. Finally, consider a completely different activity. Okay, vamos a ver. Uh, ahorita tomen 30 segunditos y denle una leída así a todo. Ya lo escucharon, ahora leámoslo en 30 segunditos. Okay, is there any questions so far? Alguien tiene alguna pregunta? Do you have any question? Maybe what do you mean freedom? Rhythm. Uh -huh. Rhythm. Rhythm. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. In once? Nuns. Um like enjoying or um yeah, enjoying or something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. What teacher what does reluctant mean? Reluctant as like uh, that you resist and you are avoiding that you don't like it so much and you are like uh, forced to do something. Oh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Teacher, I have a question with uh, with a uh, with a word with a uh, yes. It nuance or nouns i don't know okay nuance it's like enjoying but uh, allow me to see one word and one exact word all right because um i could see i could say enjoy um, to beauty or, um, allow me to see something for you thank you mm -hmm. uh just one second uh-huh it will be like Uh -huh. Beauty by combinations, okay? Enjoying by combinations. Um, like, um, yeah, combinations. Uh, how can I explain this? Well, in music, we say this. Un matiz, una forma de combinar un sonido con otro, un ritmo con otro. So, like, the flow of beauty and uh, how can I say this? Uh, allow me to mm, yeah it's something like this to feel the beauty or to make the difference into the beauty in the combination of 
In this case, we're talking about music. So sensitivity to the sounds, the rhythm, and uh, voices, like something like that. The combination of all the elements. Yeah. Oh, yes, I got it. Thanks. Okay. Okay, is anything else? Is there um, anything? Yeah. Okay. I have some, uh, well, I don't know what is the meaning of lifelong source. Oh, live, lifelong, this? Yes, no, but in the another, in, uh, in the third line. This one? Third line, uh, up. Third, third, yes. uh, a lifelong, a, a, in this case, is something that provides you something for all your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. En este caso sería lifelong source of pleasure. Es como una vida, una fuente, la música, ¿verdad? Eh, es como introducirlos a una fuente de placer para toda la vida. O sea, que le va a gustar toda la vida. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Teacher. Tell me. And what is the pronunciation? They also teach variety of rhythm. 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 Uh -huh. rhythm. Uh -huh. rhythm is. Okay. Yeah. Rhythm. Okay. All right, people. Now let's go to the transitions of addition. These words that you see in the light blue color are resulted. I mean, they are not all of them um, addition or for adding ideas. They are just um, they are just making the transition between one idea and the other idea, but. It's giving a meaning. For example, the first one, it says first. This is a sequencing word, okay? It's a sequence word. It's a transition of sequence, okay? Then you say, they also teach rhythm. That's adding, that's adding. And saying también, as well, too, all right? Also. Furthermore, yes, it's addition to. Moreover, addition, right? As a result, as a result is um, cause and effect, right? The cause is that they can train the ear and help with language learning. As a result of everything that I said about the music lessons and the benefits and all that I said, as a result, como un efecto de todo lo que yo dije, the cause, Parents should see the lessons as an investment, not just an expense, okay? Es this cause and effect. También es una transición, ¿verdad? También es una transición. Está agregando una idea más relacionada con el tema anterior, pero está dando el significado de que esta idea que estoy diciendo es un efecto de que esta causa puede producir o produce, ¿verdad? Bien, tenemos, on the other hand, on the other hand, it means a different thing, okay? An opposite thing will be, on the other hand, aquí arriba estábamos hablando de los niños que sí les va a gustar toda la vida, o les podría gustar potencialmente. Pero acá abajo, on the other hand, estamos hablando de los niños que si los forzamos, no traen ellos su su inclinación, ¿verdad?, hacia la música. Entonces, eso puede ser contraproducente. Entonces, on the other hand, yeah, forcing a reluctant child to spend hours on lessons, etc. Entonces, esta es una opposite to the, la, to the previous idea. Then we have still. If she still resists, right? If she st still resists, still, still. Todavía. It means it remains. It remains. Okay. Uh, let's see. Instead, 
instead is that you need a different thing, okay? A completely different option, okay? And another optional idea or another choice. And then we have finally, it's a transition word, ¿verdad? También es una transición. But this is sequence, okay? Estoy siguiendo la secuencia de los eventos en mi escrito o en mi lectura. Finally, as the last point that I'm going to say, okay? Finally, consider a completely different activity, okay? Este finally viene siendo el final de esta idea, ¿verdad? It's a completely mm -hmm. activity. Different activity, okay? ¿Vamos bien hasta ahí? Teacher. Tell me. Um, what does um, perhaps mean? Perhaps es tal vez. Probablemente. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Es más formal que decir maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lo podríamos sustituir con probably. Okay. Bien, vamos a ver entonces. A ver, Carlos Ernesto, por favor, léame hasta este primer punto. De ahí sigue Eulice hasta este otro primer punto de values. Nancy sigue hasta el siguiente punto, learning. Luego eh, Nelson hasta el siguiente punto. Vamos. Ok. Eh, transition or partition. Music lesson can benefit children in several ways. First, they introduce children to a potentially lifelong source of pleasure. Liz? Eulise? Me, teacher? Yeah, did I, didn't I say Eulise? Yes, Eulise. Okay, I don't hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. Donde? Where? I, aquí. They. Uh -huh. They also teach rise. Rhythm. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, visibility. Sensitivity to nose. Teamwork and other values. Thank you. Continue, please. Good yes. morning. There is evidence they can train the ear and help with language learning. Thank you. As a result, parents should see the lessons as an, as an investment, not just an expense. All right. Now, please continue, Jose Miguel, to the first point or period, and then Lorena, then Cristina. And then Blanca, okay? On the other hand, forcing a reluctant child to spend hours on lessons may cause him to develop a lifelong dislike of music. Perhaps he or she might get more value from a different kind of music or a completely different activity. You, you call three a fifth lesson if she still resists. Three a different instrument in, instead. 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 Finally. There, there, stop, stop. Thank you. Thank instead. you. Now, Blanca. Miss Blanca? Eh, Tiene el micrófono apagado, Blanca. Sorry. Okay. You may start. Um, excuse me. I don't, I don't listen. Okay. Desde acá va a leer. Desde donde dice finally. Finally. Uh -huh. Here. Um, my, 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 finally, aquí mire, 
my okay my finally finally consider completely different activity thank you very much thank you okay people is there any question about the transitions of addition no 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 teacher okay Creo que tenemos tiempito para darnos gusto con esto. Vamos a ir a hacer unos pequeños ejercicios. ¿Ok? Les voy a pasar un link. I will give you a link. And please scroll down until the last part. And it says at the top, beginner level. Then it says intermediate level, and then it says advanced. So we are going to do the three of them. We're going to try the beginner, then we're going to try the intermediate, then we're going to try the advanced, okay? We're going to do it, uh, I mean, to push it, okay? To push it. Okay. Este es volviendo al punto de o pasando al punto. Ahorita vamos a entrar a otro tema que ya vimos, el subject verb agreement. Okay. Aquí nos vamos a probar en los tres eh, niveles. ¿sí? Vamos a Conjugar el verbo de acuerdo al pronombre o al sujeto, ¿verdad? En el subject verb agreement, en el subject verb agreement, usualmente tenemos las dudas de los nombres no contables, de los plurales y todo eso. Entonces, empecemos por el beginner, que ya lo manejamos bastante bien, ¿ok? Acordémonos de los negativos, de los auxiliares y todo eso, ¿verdad? Bien, va por acá. El link. Could you access? Scroll down to the to the bottom, okay? Which part exactly? We are going to start with the beginner. Okay. It says subject verb agreement exercises. I will just show it like this for you to see it. Okay. This part. This part. Okay. Got it?
Ok, everyone. A ver. Ya lo hicieron, ¿verdad? Esa está re fácil. A ver. Solo el beginner ahorita. A ver. Comencemos. Let's start. Let's start. Who wants to start reading? Linda. Uh -huh. I want to read. Okay. Uh -huh. You may start. Yes, but I lost the, the link when I turned off the microphone. Okay, I found it. My teacher is funny. Mm -hmm. He is to tell jokes. He? I think these jokes are funny. And my friends agree. Most of the students in my class are boys. There are not many girls in my school who are my age. It is weird. My friends Huh? Sorry, teacher, the internet. Ok, a ver, um, Cristina, please help us. Teacher, sorry, um, me, me intenté ingresar otra vez, pero ya no lo no logro nuevamente, no sé qué me sucedió. Oh, pero ahorita. No, no puedo ingresar otra vez, teacher. Ya lo había logrado, pero no. Ok. No me ok, no problem. Vamos a ver quién ya lo tiene listo. To read it. A ver. The beginner or the intermediate. The beginner. Ahorita estamos en the beginner. Finish both. But I can, I can read. Ok, please. Yes. Since my teacher. Mm -hmm. My teacher is funny. He likes to tell jokes. I think his jokes are funny. And my friends agree. Most are boys. There are not many girls in my school who are my age. It is weird. My friend has a girlfriend. My parents always ask me if I have a girlfriend, but my answer is always no. All right, good. So, zero mistakes. Great. A ver, ¿a todos les ha salido bien? ¿Alguien tiene alguna pregunta? I have a question. Tell me. Um, the part that say, I think his jokes are funny. Mm -hmm. Why is are? Porque is referring to the jokes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Jokes and plural. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Y ese his se convierte en el que nosotros tendríamos sus, ¿verdad? Plural, too. All right, uh, let's go to the intermediate. Try yourself, guys. I know you can do it.
Okay, who wants to read the intermediate? Did you finish? The number one, Nelson. Do you want to read it? I didn't do yet. Okay, you haven't finished. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, Lorena, go ahead. Okay. Uh, everyone has problems in life. Countries also have problems, and so does the world. One of the great, greatest problems is the world growing population. The population in some countries is huge, but India and China have population of over 1 billion people but are growing too. <clears throat> a Very few good. of my friends... Uh, okay. I, I say it? <laughs> no, it's okay. Continue, continue. Okay. A few of my friends own cars. One of my friends is rich. Much of his money comes from his parents. His parents run three companies that sell products. I do know what kind of product the companies deal with or who their customer are. All right. Hasta ahí es lo que hemos visto hasta este momento, ¿ok? Hemos hablado de match, hemos hablado de identificar los plurales, los sujetos complejos, ¿verdad? Eh, los nombres incontables, los sujetos incontables, uncountable nouns. Y hasta ahí estamos como en el nivel nuestro, ¿verdad? Entonces, vamos a ir más allá y nos vamos a forzar a ver. Ya ahora ya sabemos las normas, las reglas más o menos de cómo sería. Tra probemos en el advanced, ¿ok? Vamos. How is it going? A ver, seamos honestos y cómo vamos por ahí. Ajá, Glenda, was it good? Um, the last three are grown. So on the third, in the third paragraph. 
in the first one and second are good. <clears throat> okay, so so you were saying the advanced. Yes, in advanced. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. In my case, I made two mistakes um, in the first one and the second one. All right. So we need to read just a little more, okay? More carefully. In the yeah. second, I confuse because it says the pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. So they are two in my mind. <laughs> so yes, I but we are talking about one pair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I put R. But it's the another. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, in the third exercise, when you use the have and has. Yes. In the last, I apply it to, and I choose have. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Number two. Let and what is a, what is high? Has. What is has? Has. Has mm -hmm. es tener, pero para la tercera persona. Exactly, but in the sentences, I apply to has. Oh, no, it's has to. But why? I apply to has responded. Has responded a la, o sea, ni siquiera a la compañía que yo apliqué ha respondido. Mm -hmm. Apply to es un phrasal verb. Apply to. Mm -hmm. Junto. Mm -hmm. Es apply to. El to no está afectando a has. Está afectando a applied. Applied. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And about six months. In about six months. I choose R and the, no. the right answer is S. Uh -huh. Lo que pasa oh. es que el siguiente sería a long time, is a long time. Solo estamos hablando de time. Ajá. No estamos yeah. hablando de exactamente de los seis meses, por decirlo así, sino que estamos hablando de un tiempo largo, a long time. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. Yeah. Yes. It's really confusing. Yes, it's kind of confusing, but this is, uh, you are going to master this just with practice, okay? Don't worry, don't worry. I just wanted you to face the situations that we can find when we are reading, okay? When we are reading, usually um, we need to um, uh, see the relation between the verb and mm -hmm. the subject. And it's really important for us because we are learning, okay? We are learning to form the sentence. So if you are reading something, please, please see the form of the verb and notice what is the subject in the sentence. You have to identify the subject. If you don't ad identify the subject, then you are not going to know what form of the verb you are going to use, okay? That is why I wanted you to see the, right? And what about you, Carlos Ernesto? How was it? Jose Miguel? Uh, I, I Hello, a, Carlos. I have a question, I confusing the, the same. Apply to how? Mm -hmm. Apply to okay. es el phrasal verb. Okay, apply to. A la que apliqué, ¿verdad? A la que apliqué. Ese to me hace a la que, okay? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Entonces el verbo aquí sería... Apply to. How? Apply no. to. Mm -mm. Porque solo era una company, ¿Verdad? A ver. In one company. Mm -hmm. I apply to. Not even one company that apply to, that I apply to. Not even one company. Una. 
Okay. Ni siquiera una compañía no, no. me ha respondido. Ok. Entonces el verbo queda, ¿cómo queda el verbo aquí? Has. 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 Because the company is not even one company. Hmm? Mm. That's the subject. Not even one company has. All right. Ajá, o sea, como está hablando de, de una, ¿verdad? Que es una cosa, es has. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. All right, people. So, let's continue with this. Ya vimos que hemos llegado muy bien eh, del de principiante. Manejamos muy bien ya el intermedio. Ahora, pues ya de aquí en adelante hay que irle agregando, ¿verdad? Hay que irle agregando a esto. Bien. Vamos entonces a la siguiente parte de esta clase. Let's move forward to the next part because we want to go to the, um, the manual. In the manual, we have a short reading. And this is on page 24, if I'm not wrong. Page 24. And they are talking about the focus group and how you have to prepare or pre-plan the questions to in order to be successful okay and to get the better results when you are using these research methods so let's go and read it page 24 how to to word the questions and what kind of questions we are going to use in um, a focus group okay So here we are. And it says, okay, let's read the instructions. Read the following excerpt about tips to design focus group questions. Okay. This is how to word them, right? You can help your members have a more productive session by asking questions that grab their attention and get them to provide more honest and complete responses. Number one, introductions. Begin the session with a set of questions that will enable focus group members to get to know each other better. For example, their favorite hobbies and interests, what they enjoy focus groups, etc. Number two, fun starter questions or activity. Ask a fun question or do a team building game to get the group's creativity uh, flowing. For example, ask them to think of three words to describe their favorite hobby. Number three, format. When choosing focus group questions, be sure to include a mix of multiple choice questions to provide structure and direction and open-ended questions to allow for further exploration and discovery. Number four, rating scale. Select an appropriate rating scale to measure different levels of approval. Number five, specificity. Avoid vague open-ended questions that simply ask why. The word why has negative meaning. It makes the respondent the, think their first answer was not good. Instead, ask respondents to provide some specific examples of what they liked or did not like about the item in question. Number six, closing. Thank the participants for their help and ask if there anything could be done to improve their experience as a member of the focus group. Okay, I need you to read, guys. So we're going to move just for, let's see, 10, 10 minutes, okay? Let's try with 15 minutes. La, la actividad yo la tenía planeada para 10 minutos, pero ok, 15 minutos para que de una sola vez ustedes revisen sus preguntas que ya hicieron y que las ubiquen de esa manera, ¿verdad? Pregunta de introducción, las preguntas exactamente del producto, las preguntas de una forma de actividad, de interacción con los participantes. Y las últimas, ¿verdad? Que son eh, de agradecimiento, ¿ok? Y pues, obviamente, la pregunta sería, ¿verdad? What, what would you add, ¿ok? Or what could be your, 
a what's your opinion about this focus group was it interesting or whatever it was okay so let's move to the breakout rooms vamos a hacer esto van a leerla ese ese extracto de ese artículo lo van a leer luego van a revisar sus preguntas las van a ubicar de esa manera en ese orden ok hablando de 15 minutos porque ya las tienen hechas ok y luego pues regresamos para acá ahorita son las 9 y 20 son 9.35 we are back ya preguntas Questions? Please, everybody, join your groups. Even though you are, a, as a listener, you may just listen to what your classmates are doing. Yes, I share the answer the question, but I believe that is document. Uh, okay, this it. This is the classification for this question. You can see? Yes. Okay. ¿Alguien puede ver lo del cuadrito que les envié? O no sé si comparto las dos pantallas, pero se van a ver chiquitas. Eh, sí, vea, con que así se ve bien pequeñita. Vamos a tratar de hacerlo más grande. Quiero ver. Voy a tratar de hacerlo. Bien chiquita. ¿Qué tanto problema en esta en cumplir las cosas? Tal vez las, las, 
las dos, quiero ver, ajá, las dos primeras creo que entran en la parte, en la primera parte de introducción, ¿verdad? Sí. Yeah. La tercera la dejamos en espera, ¿va? Sí, yeah, I don't la cuarta. Podemos agregar una sobre los intereses. Ajá, yep. sí. Porque ahí dice que la introduction they favor is hobby and interest that they enjoy focus group. Que si están de acuerdo en usar plataformas para pedir productos. Lo que les mencionaba, este, when you order food, eh, cuando pidan comida desde la casa, ¿qué prefieren? ¿Hacerlo por teléfono, por mm. eh, una aplicación, computadora y así? Mira, yo creería que la gente tal vez va a inclinarse por la aplicación por... Pero, ajá, yo también me imagino eso, pero que esa sea la pregunta, que ellos no le expresen. Ajá. 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 What, way you, what way do you prefer to order uh, fast food? What would you like? Ah, what uh, would you like? What would you prefer? Podríamos hacerla así, este, como no dando más opciones, si le gustaría la, la utilizar la aplicación o, o llamada telefónica para usar el servicio. Pero no sé si estaría bien como ya como encajonar al público a una opción o la otra. Teacher. Hello, Eulice. Uh, me salí porque estaba solo en el grupo. Ahí está Nelson waiting for you. Go back. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. ¿Puede regresarme? Uh, actually, can't. I can't. Uh, vea abajo. Okay, there. Eulice, uh -huh. vea abajo en la opción de breakout rooms y póngala ahí unirse. ¿A salas para grupos pequeños? Exacto. Uh -huh. Ok, ahorita. Uh -huh. Gracias. Ok. okay. Creo que no está correcto. No. Continue. Okay. With five specific City, avoid while power open ending question that simply as why the word why has a negative meaning. It made the response in their first answer was not good. Instead, as respondent to provide some specific examples of what they like or they not like about the Item in question. Closing. Dang, dang. Nuance. Nuance. Okay. Dang, thanks the participants for her help and ask if her and nothing. Close anything. Cool. anything. Anything could be done to improve their experience as a member of the focus group. Okay. Okay, perfect. Nosotros tenemos tenemos preguntas introductorias. Y creo que serían las primeras tres. Uh -huh. eh, Hello, girls. Tres. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Ok, aquí en la número cinco, pronunciation, specificity. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah, it's kind of long and kind of uh, like tongue twister. 
Específico. 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 Específico.
Hello, Edwin. Eulise is right here. So you may read with him, even though we are going to finish uh, right now the activity. Hello everyone. How was it? ¿Cómo les fue? En la lectura se comprendió el tipo de preguntas que deben haber en un focus group. Easy, right? Entenderlo sí, aplicarlo. Ajá. Yeah, yeah is of course, of course, you have to master that when you do it. But don't worry, you are in the way. You are on the way to do it. Don't worry. Yo creo que las presentaciones las vamos a dejar para el día lunes y nos vamos a ir a hacer el review de, eh, perdón, el examen, ¿ok? Vamos a hacer el examen juntos porque es eh, relacionado a, más que todo a la unidad 1. Lo más importante es conocer vocabulario. Vocabulario se refiere a conocer definiciones, definitions. Entonces, part one, part two, part three, part four, eh, es prácticamente el present perfect y cosas bastante sencillas y útiles, ¿verdad? Vamos a ir para allá. Espero que a nadie le haya dado problemas la plataforma. A mí sí me, me generó un poco de problema. Por ejemplo, esta yo no la he, he podido enviar desde hace un buen tiempo. Se me ha quedado ahí trabada. Espero que solo sea en mi, en mi cuenta. Espero que ustedes sí lo puedan enviar. ¿Qué examen es el que vamos a hacer? El midterm. El midterm, exacto. Uh -huh. oh. Ah, qué bien. Sí, exacto. Ajá. Nos vamos a todos a la, al midterm, ¿ok? Al midterm. Vamos a recordar un poquito, ¿ok? Vamos a recordar un poquito. Ustedes son los que lo van a ir haciendo porque es un examen, ¿ok? Entonces, ay, Dios mío, ya las tengo contestadas. Estas es como si las envié. I'm sorry, guys. A ver, no, vamos a hacer también una ya cosa. ya las tengo. Ya las hizo también. Ah, ok. ¿Y las cuatro partes? Igual yo. Sí, las cuatro. ¿Ya las hicieron? Yo ah, no. bueno. Yo ah, no. Pero yo estaba que... entretenido. Lo que pasa es que, por último, ya no revisé el... Um... Toda la mañana me pasé revisando sus calificaciones, sus scores, todo, todo. Pero... Eh, ya ahorita en la yo tarde ya no aquí. hice el... ¿Ah? Sí, yo las hice hoy en la tarde, así que no le iba a parecer. Ok, en lo, que, well. en, lo que estaba esperando, en lo que estaba esperando que empezara la clase. Ah, ok. Es que fíjense que es necesario que ahora quede finalizado, ok. Es necesario, sumamente importante, porque esta es nuestra tercera semana ya. Entonces necesitamos que esto quede submitted. Así que, por favor, eh, 
A ver, si hay alguna duda, alguna pregunta para no hacer repetitivo el asunto. Si hay alguien que, tal vez yo digo, si hay alguien que no las haya hecho, que pueda proyectar y lo vamos haciendo así. Ok, sí. eso pensé sí. al principio. Ajá, va, Glenda, démosle, Glenda. You can do it, please. Share your screen. No, es que yo la compu no la traje, está en ah, el celular. Ok, ok. Y por eso no la he hecho tampoco, pero mañana ah, la hago. Ah, ok. Uh, ¿Alguien que quiera compartir lo que no lo haya hecho? Pero tomaré nota. Vale, pero solo uno, comparta, por favor. No, no, no se puede todos al mismo tiempo. Ey, cálmense. Se va a trabajar el Zoom. A ver, no, estoy hablando en serio, chicos. Fíjense que a veces por eso no resuelvo las tareas en clase, porque ya muchos ya las han realizado y se vuelve repetitivo. Y realmente el objetivo de las tareas y los exámenes es en su tiempo, ¿verdad? Y en su eh, eh, ritmo, ¿verdad? Pero eh, necesitamos que quede ahora esto subido. Por favor, por favor, lo vuelvo a decir. Debe de quedar ahora subido. Bien, yo creo que lo vamos a, a ir. A, dígame. Pero eso es solo sección 2, la que tiene que quedar subido. Todo. Todito, todito. Unit 1 and unit 2. Section 1 and section 2. Uh -huh. y, y el examen y el midterm test exacto uh -huh. todo eso tenemos que eh, ya salir ya de la primera parte acordémonos que ahorita ya viene y la segunda Ay, no, parte pero, uh -huh. pero hay una tarea que no he hecho todavía dígame cuál es no la tarea la 2.14 ajá ajá eh, la que vimos ayer ahorita es de la lectura verdad uh -huh. Vale, tomémonos el tiempo ahorita y empiecen todos a realizarla para que cualquier cosa me vayan preguntando, así hagamos, ¿ok? Tomemos el tiempo, diez minutitos, vamos. Eh, teacher, I have a question. Tell me, Nancy. Um, I complete every activity, but I don't know why only appears the 45%. The 45%, what exactly? Um, Allow me to see it. Mm -hmm. The progress. Let me share the, 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 the screen. Yes, please, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So you can see I have every activity done yes Thanks. Mm -hmm. so it's all but in the progress mm -hmm. there's like is not for example this mm -hmm. and these are empty i don't know why uh because you haven't worked on homework three and homework four i mean section three and section four Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, that's the total. That's the total. That is why you feel like it is not fulfilled. But yeah, it's it's going to be growing at uh, the time you are doing section three and section four. And also the final test. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. So only uh, leave the, 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 the things we are not doing yet. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. That's what ah, it left. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. You are okay. I was checking on on your progress, and I see you are, uh, you are completely done. Uh, oh. Let me to see because you have the fifty percent in the homework uh, average, so it's okay. The fifty percent because it's unit uh, section one and section two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Por ahí tengo algunos que todavía tienen 80 en su unidad 1. No me han trabajado nada de la unidad 2, algunos de ustedes. Así que, por favor, necesito que el día de hoy ustedes trabajen a mil por hora, ¿verdad? Y me lo dejen subido, por favor. Tienen que hacer también el midterm test. 
cada día, eh, pues les he dicho, ¿verdad? Do your homework, porque si no se va acumulando de una manera tal que después es muy difícil ponerse al día. Así que necesitamos que ahorita todos, todos queden al día, ¿verdad? Al, hasta la 2.14. Uh, perdón, dos, sí, 2.14 y el midterm test. O sea, sería eh, lo de las primeras tres semanas. Tengo por ahí algunos que en la unidad 1 tienen 80, pero es por la tarea 1.5. No sé por qué no la han realizado realmente. Yo creo que se les ha pasado por alto porque viene después de dos, eh, de dos videos. Así que, por favor, todos realizando esa actividad. Mm, de ahí la última. ¿Alguien ha tenido alguna duda o algo que quiera comentar de las tareas? Sure. Chame a Ulises. De la sección 1, 1, de la tarea 1.5, las dos primeras, bueno, yo no las pude realizar. Porque, eh, no, no sé, intenté varias veces y no, 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 no siempre me salió mala. Ok, vamos a ver, sería la de Product Development, ¿verdad? Sí. Yes. Ajá, ok, vamos ahí. Bueno, pregunta rápida, porcentaje total que deberíamos tener. At 45. 45%. Ya uh -huh. estoy. All right, good. Uh -huh. soy, soy libre de pecado. Ok. Ah, pues sí, pero no puede lanzar la piedra todavía. Ah, no. Ok, vamos a ver. Ahorita voy, ahorita voy. A ver. ¿Alguien quisiera colaborarle a Eulice? Que comparta la primera tarea. Yes, yes. Please, Nancy, go I ahead. I would like. Mm -hmm. The five, what? 1.5. 1.5. Yeah, yes. Okay, let me share. This is. Mm -hmm. A ver, eh, ese era Ulises? Sí, sí, es. Ok, vamos todos ayudando, pues. Vamos a ver, vamos a resolverla. Ok, en esa lo que hay que hacer es eh, reducir las cláusulas adverbiales, de Ulises. Reduce the adverb clauses to adverb phrases. Es lo que hacíamos el día de hoy al principio, ¿se acuerdan? Que hay que ver cuál es la frase adverbial, ¿verdad? Hay que revisar si es el mismo sujeto en las dos para poder hacerlo y agregarle ing o convertirlo en ing, el verbo de la frase, eh, perdón, de la cláusula adverbial para convertirlo en una frase, ¿verdad? Ok, ya sé lo que estaba haciendo mal entonces. Ok. Entonces, la primera... La primera dice they y la siguiente dice the, the performers. ¿Es el mismo sujeto? Sí. ¿Ok? It's the same subject. Entonces sí se puede reducir esta cláusula adverbial. Entonces sería, le vamos a, a ver, vamos a detectar cuál es el verbo. San, pasado del verbo. Sí. Thing. Entonces, vamos a convertirlo en ING. After singing. Eliminamos el sujeto y ponemos ING. ¿Verdad? Bye. Vamos a ver, ¿quién le explica la number two? A ver, ayudémosle a Ulise, please. It's the same case. Uh, you have to uh, so or reduce the adverb clause and see where is the subject, the main subject. So it says before he answered, the subject is he. 
He grabbed a pencil and notebook is the same subject. So you identify uh, the, uh, what is the name of that? <laughs> uh, adverb clause. Adverb clause. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to reduce, to reduce the, the verb and eliminate the subject, he, and pass the, the, the verb with ing. So it's before answering the phone, he grabbed a pencil and notepad. Correct. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Okay, what about number three? Ya en la tercera, creo que ya le va Vamos a la tercera. Let's go to the third one. Um, la tercera, y cuarta y quinta, las tengo buenas. Solo la primera Good. y segunda. Great. Yay. Yeah, we did it. Ya la envió, I see. Teacher, I remember that the file is uh, have a mistake in the platform. Uh, why? Uh, you send a message to chat and say all top is a concession advert, but we can reduce. It as the adverbial class of time we were studying. It, actually, it's not a mistake exactly. Uh, remember that we were saying, I mean, we were studying these kind of words like although, even though, mm -hmm. and meanwhile, and other words that are not in in our list, like before, when, while, etc. Right? Okay. But although follows the same rule. You have to eliminate the subject and also you have mm, to eliminate the verb when you want to reduce it, okay? When it is acting as an adverb, like this case. Mm -hmm. Correct. Lo que les decía yo nada más era que no está en la lista de nuestra clase, pero eh, funciona casi igual. All right. In this case, is not hurting. It's hurt. It's hurt because um, the it's not like a verb. It's an adjective, right? Mm -hmm. If it was a verb, then you should write ing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Tell me. Uh, in the unit one, mm -hmm. I have one hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Unit two, 100%. Mm -hmm. Meter, 100%. Total, mm -hmm. 45%. <laughs> Great. Of the total. Of the total. Okay. If, it's, if not 50%. Not yet. No. Not yet. Mm -mm. Ah, I think. Yeah, no, not if yet. Aha, uh -huh, because we have only 14, if I'm not wrong. Right, 14, if we had 15, then it should be the 50%. Uh, allow me to see this. Uh, or maybe. I want to see your, uh, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> no, 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 it's not, it's not, uh, okay, look at sure. this. It's the 45% of the total, of the total. Okay, huh? of the total. Yeah. Let's see this. Just one second. I can compare uh, share the screen. Yes, you should have the fifty percent. You have, sh I mean, you should have the fifty percent. And I'm seeing here that you have the fifty percent of homework plus the percentage of of the midterm exam mm -hmm. it becomes 45 okay pero ese 45 que usted mira realmente es la nota 
no está diciendo que es el 45%, ¿ok? Ah. Ahorita usted de su total de 100 lleva 45, ¿ya? Le falta ganarse la otra parte. ¿ya? Ah. Y hasta ahí vamos correctos, porque el examen final tiene el otro porcentaje. Entonces, ahí es donde le va a subir ese otro 5% que le falta para el 50% que usted me está diciendo. ¿Ok? Ah, ok. Yo pensé que ahorita tendría que pasar el 50%. Eh, no, 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 no. Le, ahí le va a aparecer 45%, que es la nota ya, nota, neta. Ah, uh -huh. ok. Exacto. El 50% que mira ahí del promedio de las tareas. Ese es el 50%. Hasta ahí vamos bien. Más el 100% del midterm test, ¿verdad? Ajá, uh -huh. ok. Uh -huh. Thank you. Ok. Ok, people. Eh, yo creo que... A ver. En, uh, en el examen intermedio, en el midterm test, lo único que sí quisiera quizás agregarles en el midterm test. A ver. en la parte 4 Sí, definitivamente yo tengo algún glitch en mi en mi usuario. No puedo mm, ver el mis envíos ok, ya voy a revisar más adelante bien, entonces la parte 4 si ustedes tienen alguna duda ustedes se van, es prácticamente la primera tarea ok, es prácticamente la primera tarea y es puro vocabulario, así que creo que en esa no van a tener mayor problema solo que recuerden que eso es de el Product Development Process. Ok, de la unidad 1. ¿Hay alguna otra pregunta? ¿O estamos bien? Díganme con confianza, please. Estamos bien. <risas> ok, ok, nice. Ajá, ¿cómo se sienten hasta ahorita? ¿Cómo vamos? Con más vocabulario. Sí, más, más vocabulario, pero con menos técnicas de marketing. <risa> <risa> oh, hoy. That's funny. Ok. Uh -huh. Ya, ya van a crecer en el marketing, ya van a ver. Uh -huh. <risa> no creo. <risa> no creo. <risa> ¿Cómo no? no ya van a ver. Esa cuando ya fracasó conmigo. Oh, my goodness, no way, no way. <risa> bueno, chicos, eh, uh, yo creo que hasta ahí estamos bien. Nos quedó una, una actividad de lectura. Se las voy a subir en la plataforma en la última sesión, que es la de hoy, de la unidad 2, para que ustedes lean y realicen esa actividad ahora el fin de semana. Eh, expandan un poquito el vocabulario, verifiquen, conozcan otras formas de utilizar o cómo se utilizan las transition words. Y es precisamente cerca de ese tema, ¿verdad? To friend and unfriend, ¿ok? Así que ahí se los voy a pasar. Ahí les he visto cuando ya lo haya subido. Y si ya no hay más preguntas, nos quedamos hasta aquí. Solo voy a tomar la asistencia. I will call the roll. Please, everybody, turn your camera on because that's a requirement from Insofort. And when you hear that I call your name, you say press. Okay. Ana Lorena Lobato Orellana. Present. Blanca Jennifer Torres de Martinez. Present. Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martinez. Present. Carlos Eduardo Torres Durán. Carlos Ernesto Hernández Cepeda. Present. 
Carlos Francisco Arias Sánchez. Cristina Edith Ramos Sarríos. Present. Ok. Edwin Antonio Quintero Sumaña. Present. Eulice Torres Torres. Present. Fátima Noemí Umaña Castro. Glenda Josefina Toledo Leiva. Ah, pero Present. Fátima estaba conectada, ¿verdad? ¿La vieron ustedes? José Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. Mr. José Salvador, Osman Atilio Serrano, Karen Lisset Sánchez Castro, Present teacher. Nancy Margarita Morán Morán, Present. Nelson Alberto Peraza Mejía, Ok, good. Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz, Ok, thank you. Raúl Ernesto González, Rosa del Carmen Enríquez Flores. Miss Rosa. Wilber, Wilber Alberto Pérez Méndez. He sent a message to the Oh, Rosa. yes, you're right, you're right. Uh, dice Hosman. Yes, you're right. Okay, let's see. Okay. Y luego José Miguel Torres Hernández. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Entonces, la sesión uno a uno le correspondería al número 15 del día de hoy, que es Nancy Margarita Morán Morán. Miss Nancy. Okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. Then, everybody. Have a very good weekend. See you Monday. Please do your homework and submit your midterm exam. Please. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Enjoy bye. your week. Bye. 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 Take care. You good too. Weekend, okay, bye. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hello, Nancy. Here we are. How can I assist you today? Mm, well, I don't know what is uh, this. It's like a fox group. <laughs> I don't know, but oh, individual. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are your 10 minutes of fame, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can tell me any uh, opinion you've got or if you have thoughts, if you want to ask a question about the content or if you want to uh, practice something from the content we have seen maybe from my material or from the platform so you can tell me anything you want me to practice i am okay. yours today oh okay. <laughs> yeah okay i would like to uh, have the opportunity to ask you some um advices how oh, okay. to how to improve my my speaking because i think i have a lot of um i don't know how to say that <laughs> Is that I try to speak in English because I want to improve it. and is a this is the opportunity to practice. Very good, correct. Okay, if we talk about advice, um actually you have a very good pronunciation, you have vocabulary, and you structure very well. Very okay. well. Okay. Maybe you have to detect exactly what's the part that you feel that it's uh, that you're struggling with okay uh mm -hmm. when you detect that then we are going to work on it for example my problem could be vocabulary okay mm -hmm. my problem could be vocabulary so what i'm going to do is to mm, see everything around me because that's what i know okay and then i'm going to extend just a little more it, it, depending on my field of work or maybe the um, or the industry of my company, the things that I use, the tools that I use. So I'm um, looking for 
I mean, looking up in the dictionary or maybe online or Googling. But if my problem is pronunciation, then what I have to do is to know the sounds of the letters or uh, practice um, if they, um, I mean, reading aloud, singing, or mm -hmm. a listening to people and imitating. For example, if you watch movies, then you imitate the dialogues or uh, when you have this problem of pronunciation, but you know the vocabulary, you understand people speaking. So you have to imitate, imitate mm -hmm. people. So for example, the TED Talks are great for that. Yes. are really great. So you can watch these speech and um, you can imitate at the time that people is talking. That's oh, okay. if you want pronunciation. Now, if your problem is grammar, for example, then you have to do exercises of grammar, okay? So okay. you have to detect exactly what you think you're struggling with. Oh, okay. uh, I don't know if you have detected it. Yes, I have detected. Mm -hmm. uh, my problem, my main problem is uh, the listening, to be honest. Uh, when I when I'm watching some series or watch a TED podcast because I I used to to watch that that kind of videos. Um I try to understand but um, they speak very 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 fast. Very so fast, I, yeah. Yes, and not so I only have... fast, not only fast, they have uh, these idiomatic expressions or they have um, colloquial phrases or the yes, collocations exactly. are different uh, from the book, right? They are far away from yes, the book. Exactly. So yeah, I understand that you have that problem, but um, you say that the listening, okay? Yes. Listening. Okay, there is no other way <laughs> to <laughs> improve your listening, but listening, okay? <laughs> okay, if you want to sing, then you have to practice singing. If you want to play an instrument or to master playing an instrument, then you have to practice that instrument and the skills for that instrument. But if you want to learn to understand people, then you have to listen to these people more. But you yes. have some strategies, okay? You can use some strategies. These are the strategies. Uh, you may start by, uh, I don't know if you're doing this, but you um, click on the clock captions, but in English, okay? Mm -hmm. In English, not in the Spanish. Uh, then you use the closed captions. Usually they don't match, right? <laughs> because mm -hmm. uh, yes, exactly. Uh, technologically, <laughs> technologically, there is a glitch with that, but it's not perfect but it's going to be a guide, okay? Yes. It's going to be a guide. I don't know if you do it or if you used to do it. Um, it will be really a very good strategy to match what you are listening to what they are saying, okay? Maybe sometimes you are going to see me there that it doesn't match, but you hear something different, okay? Then that's... Um, a improving your listening okay that's improving your listening there is another way you may improve your listening and it is speaking okay when you pronounce correctly and uh, you uh your pronounce i mean vocalization um is getting perfect then you're going to um have a um, a very fine ear when people are linking the words. Yes, okay? exactly. When That's they the are problem. The words. <laughs> yes, because they have a lot of reductions and these reductions makes this kind of difficult for people who want to improve listening. But that's the point that you have to uh, start with. Okay, start with the linking of words when you speak use your contractions use um the reductions like gonna had uh, or or hata or those kind of reductions 
Okay. Plus okay. the reductions of consonants, consonants and vowels, right? When you link the words together. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's not the speed or they are speaking fast. No, they are speaking reducted. And that's yes, exactly. what it makes. Reducted. Yeah, it makes And it that sense. makes me confused and, and stop thinking in English and say, what they are saying, I don't understand. Okay, uh-huh. That's true. But if you try to translate what they say, I think that's a mistake. It doesn't work for me. Maybe for some people it works. But for me, it doesn't work. To think in Spanish when I'm listening to English, mm, for me, it doesn't work. What it works is listen to English, imitate the English, and try to define the word in English. Okay? It's not... Spanish, no Spanish. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because it's if you try to yeah. translate, if you try to translate, then you are going to miss the next idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. you are going to you are going to lose the flow, okay, of the speech. Then you are going to understand one sentence, but not the other sentence, because sometimes the first sentence is the meaning of the other sentence, as we saw with the adverb clause, right? Mm -hmm. With the other yes. clauses, if we uh, just want to understand the first other, I mean, the first clause, you're not going to have the complete meaning. So you have to listen to oh, the complete idea. That's yeah. the thing. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Okay. So the strategies are use the closed captions in English if you mm -hmm. want. Yes. Okay. Listen to the... Um, to this speech not once but three times three okay? times okay yeah at least at least how come don't stop it just live it and play it um uh, with a non-stop okay? okay that's the first thing that's the first thing and if you want, you can use head, headsets to make it closer, right? To your yes, brain. Yes, reduce right? the noise around here. Yes. And close your eyes in the second time, okay? Close okay. your eyes in the second time. What are you going to do? Do Just listen to the speech. You know, because you have already uh, heard it. But when you... um listen to the speech for the second time then you close your eyes and if you have a dot then you open your eyes and then close them again okay okay yeah open your eyes just to see what it was okay. and the third it's going to be maybe constantly and you're going to tell yes. us okay maybe yes. it's going to be constantly but in the third time you listen to the same speech close your eyes but don't open your eyes don't open your eyes okay and just stay like this listening to everything that the person is saying okay and if you want you can just make an excerpt okay just a part of the speech for not staying the 40 minutes listening to it or 15 minutes but maybe the introduction okay maybe the introduction then you are going to identify better in the third and, time or maybe some troubles i have is when they talk very technician with very technician words and that confused me because i think i don't know the meaning of that word what we say what did he say or something like that and i think i have to to practice with a podcast more easily to understand for okay, example, but remember that you, yes, you have to look for the vocabulary that you already know uh, to improve and expand later, not right yes. now. You you don't have to try to expand right now. As I did today with the, the exercises, we started with the beginning, okay? Beginner level, okay? Yes. We did it, we pass it, so then let's go to the next level. That's what you have to do. You cannot go to the advance if you haven't tried the first thing, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, the other thing is that about the vocabulary, technical words or um, this jargon, uh, 
specific from a profession or from an area, a specific area that maybe you, you are not familiar with, I think it's not the most recommendable um, option, okay? You have to look for the speeches um, or the talks that are related to your job, for example, or mm -hmm. problems uh, related to experiences with your family or maybe things that you already know or that you are familiar with in your language, okay, in Spanish. So you are going to um, have the opportunity to practice the association of words, okay? Because mm -hmm. you know the, the reality, you know the problem, or you know the main uh, topic, okay? Mm -hmm. So you know it in your language. So you associate the words, uh, to the meaning okay, okay. Uh, yes. even though you are going to face that you're going to find some some words that maybe have a complete totally different meaning from the one that you think that it is in the Spanish into English but mm -hmm. you are going to be improving okay oh, yes that's so a, I think that's that's a good uh start starter um yeah if you like this kind of speech. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, okay. I like because um, I try to identify the words I know, I already know, mm -hmm. but um, I have some problems with the, um, bueno, lo voy a decir en español, eh, como la unión de dos ideas diferentes. Oh, well, uh, the transition. As we said, uh -huh. right? The transition yes. from one idea to the other idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, now you know some words that are going to you uh take you to the next idea, and they are going to take you just, I mean, with the right meaning. Okay, that they are comparing. Maybe they are a uh, contrasting. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they are just adding or putting in order the ideas. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yes, but it's a good advice and I really appreciate it. I will practice with that and I will tell you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes, <was> please <laughs> let me know. Let me know. It's, yes. going, it's going to be a good experience, but close your eyes and just listen. Okay, yes, mm -hmm. almost first, three times. Yes, but the first time is like if you were with the mullets, right? It's como si vaya con muletas, all right? Yes. The first time. You read and you listen and you practice. Okay. And the next time to you close your eyes, if you don't understand something, how it was, so you open your eyes and close them. And then you don't open your eyes. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I would do it. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so okay. Much. Then uh, if you don't have any more questions, I think we're finished, right? Yes, I don't have any okay. questions about it, about the topics, um, because I, I know some some vocabulary about these methods because I I study in the university, so I I practice a lot of works with. with and these what topics. is your career? What what are you studying? I studied a uh, tourism. Uh, at the oh, yes okay. yes mm -hmm. at the Matias oh great great so you have a very good base right? yes a very good base from yes, base I, mm -hmm. well in my to get my, the, my degree i have to finish english with in the in the I thought, how is the name of the of the test of the international test that is very important uh, the toic yes the toic yes All right mm -hmm. i have to make the toic and get the 75 okay. percent to get my degree <laughs> to get my degree yes and, it's a requirement the, now right yes it's a requirement and the half of another language so uh, no i I studied Italian. 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 Oh, good. Yes. Good. And what's your level in Italian? 
intermediate level. Oh, great. That's good news. It's All very right. easy to know Italian. I didn't yeah, because know it's how related easy to it is. our Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I like to 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 mix uh, both languages when I studied. For example, if I am studied some verbs in English, I like to study it in Italian too. Oh, okay, great, great. So you compare and you are expanding in both languages. Good. Yeah. Good. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, admirable. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Okay, this is good to know, Nancy. And congratulations that you are improving in both languages. Okay. Yes, exactly. All <laughs> right, great. Great, great. Okay, then you can... Uh, look for a description of places because that's what you um that's your area okay places foods or local foods from other countries or i don't know routes or ways or transportation so you can look for those topics right because yes exactly. yes i i think you you master those topics in Spanish so you can now in Italian so now you can uh, <laughs> improve in English with the same yes, topic exactly exactly I want all to right <laughs> okay great like the outfits local outfits right and culture yeah mm -hmm. yeah yes. there are topics that it can make me have more comprehension in English Yes, you're right. You're right. And congratulations that you took this course too. And this goes through the advanced. So you are in a good way. You're in a good yes, way. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Of course you are because this goes uh, by stages or by building all the, the um, I mean, building your building, <laughs> right? <laughs> building the vocabulary to and also in context that's important because yes. if you build vocabulary just to build vocabulary they are only words they don't have any meaning but if you do it in a context that's what it um it's worth okay that's what it's worth mm -hmm. it's worthy mm -hmm. so thank you i don't have any more questions about it I really like the these topics about uh, the product development and yes, because I did it in the university. So I only remember when I was studying. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Yes, because in tourism, it's really important. The uh, marketing uh, It's not only oh. by products, but, but knowing the market because you offer services, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Right. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I think we finished. So enjoy your weekend, Nancy. Thank you so much. Okay. And you too. <laughs> Thank you very much. So see you Monday. See you Monday. Thank okay. you. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.